Okay. Um, just for the fun of it, let's actually try uh, PMOS amplifier so that we can actually see that things are actually quite similar to NMOS amplifiers. There's nothing really uh, changing in terms of AC. And also, as we said, that the small signal model of an NMOS and PMOS are identical. They're not similar, they're actually identical. So things should be quite similar or quite identical, as, as I said. And then um, we are also in, in this circuit, we are also having uh, a weird kind of a load at the output that we're going to talk about. So first, let's actually look at this circuit. Let's see if, we, if, I, uh, if I can actually solve things without drawing the small signal model, right? So let's first figure out what kind of an amplifier it is. Well, VN is actually applied to the gate. So this is the gate of M2. Source is connected to VDD, which is ground in the AC volt. And drain is connected to something, right? It's this thing, right? Why didn't I start with this transistor with the NMOS and said that, well, the source is connected to the uh, to the resistor and then why didn't basically, why didn't I consider M1 as the main transistor and M2 as the load transistor? Well, the reason was well, my input signal is actually connected to M2. So input is connected to here, output is read from here. So this is the main transistor and whatever I have here is kind of like that current source that I had in a few slides ago for an NMOS transistor, for an NMOS amplifier. So here, I can, if I can replace the entire thing inside the circle with a resistor, then it's just basically a common source amplifier, a PMOS common source amplifier with this load. Um, let's call this R load, right? So I can simply replace this with this circuit. This is what I'm trying to say. So I have a VIN connected to the gate, um, source is connected to VDD, still connected to VDD. And then here I'm going to call it V out. And I'm saying that the rest of it, I'm going to call it R load to ground. Okay, so it's a common source amplifier, but it's PMOS amplifier. So like it looked a little, it looks a little bit inverted because, well, now source is on the top, drain is on the bottom, but everything in the, from the AC point of view is going to be exactly similar, right? Now, what is the gain of this thing? I know that if this is a common source amplifier, is it a common source amplifier with degeneration or without degeneration? Well, the difference was if I have a resistor in the source or not. At the source of this, the, the amplifying uh, transistor, I have nothing, right? The source is connected to the AC ground, which is VDD, right? So it's a common, the normal common source amplifier. Therefore, the gain is equal to negative GM two, which is for this M2, times R L, R load. Or if I want to be more precise, times R load in parallel with R naught two. Okay. Now the question is, what is R load? Well, R load is actually the resistance that I see from this point looking down, right? This is my R load. Well, looking at this, it's exactly similar to the common source with the generation circuit that we have been discussing for the past few slides. I know that our load is going to be R naught one plus R S, the resistor in this, uh, the resistance in the source, plus G M one R naught one R S. Okay, knowing that we're done. Therefore, gain is going to be equal to GM2 in parallel with that thing. So RS plus R01 plus GM1, R01, RS, all of it in parallel with RO or R02. And that's it. That's our gain. Okay. So um, if I want to draw the small signal model of this thing, it's going to be basically, I'm going to start with uh, VN. So that's my VN going to ground. And then I have the gate source. Source is actually, so this is my VGS2. Source is connected to VDD, so that's ground. And there's a current source between drain and G1. 
M2, VGS2 between drain and source of M2. And then I have the R0 2. And then the drain of this guy is connected to the drain of M1, right? So I know that there's going to be something here. Um, GM1, VGS1. And then there's going to be R0 1. All of them to the source. Source is connected to RS, to ground. And then there's a gap between source and gate. I'm going to call that VGS1. And here I have my VB, which is a DC voltage, so it's going to be replaced with ground. Now imagine, where's my V out? V out is here. Imagine that you needed to actually calculate the gain using this small signal model. It would have taken a long time writing different kind of KCLs and KVLs and everything. But knowing that having the eye to actually see that this is a common source stage with the, and the entire M1 and RS and VB, the, the entire thing inside the circuit could be seen as a simple resistance. Basically, what we are doing is that we are saying that whatever is inside this entire object, um, I'm going to like draw a contour around the whole thing. I'm going to replace this entire thing with a simple resistor from that node to ground, right? And the resistance of that is really our load. By doing that, you can actually see that this R load is actually connected to here, and it is in parallel with R0 R two because that is also connected between that terminal, that, that node and ground, right? So R load is in parallel with R0 two, and I just found R load and replaced it here, and I have my gain, okay? So this is how I actually, you, you can calculate the gain of a rather complicated circuit, quite simply by just knowing the gain of a common source stage and knowing that what is the resistance that is seen at the drain of M1 which has a resistance in its, uh, 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 in its source called RS. Okay, let's solve another example. Now, this one has uh, three transistors. Is it the PMOS am amplifier or NMOS amplifier? I know that it, in the title it says PMOS amplifier, but then Try to figure it out for yourself. Why is it a PMOS amplifier? Well, the reason is that the V in is actually connected to the PMOS transistor, right? So that's my main transistor. M1 is my main transistor. So all I need to do is to actually say, well, if I can replace again, if I can replace the entire circuit here with a resistor, I'm good. That would be a simple common source amplifier. And uh, I, I know how to write the gain of that thing. Right. So how can I do that? Well, what is the resistance that I see from M2? So uh, I would say pause the video right now and try to actually do this for yourself. Try to find out if I, if you can actually simplify the entire thing inside that circle with the resistance or a couple of resistors in parallel. Right. Um, one resistor for M2, one resistor in the, for M3, and then they are in parallel. And then try to see if you can actually write the gain. Okay. Then you can play the video and then try to see if you if what you found is similar to what I have here. So I'm hoping that uh, you have tried this for yourself. So looking into M2, I can see that well the resistance is going to be the output resistance of a common source, right? Because M2 is a common source. I'm looking to the drain of a transistor, so the resistance is going to be just R R not two looking into M3 because I'm looking into the source of M3 we've learned in uh, one of the previous slides a couple of times that this is equal to 1 over GM3. Oops, that's an ugly 3. So 3. Now I can rewrite the, or redraw the circuit. I can say that this is really VDD, a PMOS transistor. VIN is connected to the gate of this transistor and in the drain I have an R0 2 in parallel with a 1 over GM3. Okay, I know how to write the gain of this thing. It's a common source amplifier, so the gain is going to be negative GM times R at the drain. 
what is that? It's negative GM. Well, if this is M1, so let's be precise. This is GM1, and it's at the drain of 1. So negative GM1 times, what do I have at the drain? I have the R0 of transistor 1. I always have that in parallel with R0 2 in parallel with 1 over GM3. So imagine if you wanted to actually do this using small signal model. You had three different transistors. It would have been a huge circuit, and you had to write so many KCLs and KVLs. And now you can see that with a little bit of practice, we learned how to actually simplify our circuits from a multi-transistor format to just a single transistor form. That we only care about the main transistor that is actually our amplifier transistor. The rest of them are just basically uh, loads they are actually resistors the only thing we care about them is that is their resistance so we learn how to replace them with resistors and then from that point forward is quite simple it's nice and it would be a good uh, practice it's an instructional kind of a practice if you actually draw the small signal model and see that why are not one and are not two and one over gm3 are in parallel with each other if you can't see it uh, without actually drawing it. If you can, then, well, you're fine. Go to the next slide.